So as you can see, it's running. Running on the ECU Masters EMU Black with a uh, wasted spark and bank fire injection. Uh, I did kind of want to go over how I have the trigger setting set up and you know what sensors you need and all that to get it running. Uh, that was that video was actually a couple days ago, and I've since taken everything apart because, as you could hear in the video, it's got a really bad vacuum leak somewhere, and it's making like a really bad hissing noise. And I've kind of uh, narrowed it down to I believe it's the intake gasket because the gasket that came in the universal kit was it, it wasn't very good. It was it, it seemed kind of cheap, and I don't think it's sealing very well. So I, you know, I checked my throttle body and I kind of pressure tested everything and the, the throttle body's not leaking. And uh, I mean, I'm hoping that's the problem. I don't know. I ordered a new gasket from Z Car Depot. It's like a, like a Remflex thicker intake exhaust combination uh, gasket. So hopefully that works. The, uh, the design of these is kind of quirky where they, sh you know, the, the header bolts and the intake bolts share a, they, they share a bolt. So, uh, you have to run like special stepped washers because the, uh, header flange is not as thick as the intake flange. And I, I had to actually modify these a little bit to kind of get it to work. So that might also be the problem. So a thicker gasket m might solve that. But anyway, that's a minor issue. We will figure that out. Uh, so anyway, I took it back apart and I also did a uh, header wrap because I noticed even running it for like a minute or two, cause it, there's no water in the block right now. So I can't run it for more than about a minute. I noticed that these runners were getting super hot because they're so close to the headers, right? So I ordered some header wrap and I took the header off and wrapped the whole header with that. Uh, it came out pretty good. It was, it was difficult to do, I, um, I'll admit, uh, because the headers are so close, they're almost touching here and, and here. So I had to kind of double up. I started off, you know, with each individual header being wrapped and then I had to double it up because they're so close. It was almost impossible to do, but I got it. it so anyway, let me get into some of the settings you're gonna need in order to get this started, uh, just using a crank trigger and no cam trigger, okay? So if you haven't watched my other videos, go back and watch how I wired the injectors and ha watch how I wired the coils. I'm not gonna go over that again. I'm just gonna you know, let you guys go find those videos and, and watch those because that will, that will really help you understand how this is all set up, okay? The ECU uh, is mounted in here. And I know it's gonna look messy, but this is all gonna be bundled up and it's all gonna look nice. And I'll use some, uh, some way to get it kind of tucked back in there, but that's where the ECU is gonna be. Hopefully it won't be too noticeable. I may make a plate and move it up a little bit because right now I just have it on a bolt, you know, on, on one of the AC bracket bolts. I just bolted it to that for now, but I may move the ECU up a little higher because I don't want to have my passenger in here and being able to see that or kick it or anything like that. So most likely I'll move this up a little bit so you can't see it and um, kind of wrap the wire wires around because I left a pretty good service loop, as you can see. So I have a lot of uh, places I could put it. So anyway, uh, yeah, we have, I have the ECU also running the fuel pump. So when you turn the key on, it primes the fuel pump for like a second or two seconds or whatever you want to set it at. So I have that running off of that. Uh, the main relay, there's a main relay that runs a lot of the other stuff like the uh, injectors and the coils and all that. And I ran a little fuse board, an extra fuse board for that. The the wiring harness I used, okay, from Speedway, they run everything through the, the switch. And I decided not to do that. I decided to use the what comes off the switch to trigger a relay. Because if you think about it, back in the day, they used to run a lot of your um, ignition stuff through the switch. And they didn't have as many relays. So... 
um, with like modern ECUs that are going to draw more current, modern injectors, modern coils, uh, you know, a fuel pump, uh, like all the stuff you're going to be running, the ECU itself, you know, needs 12 volts. So all the stuff you're going to be running, you don't really want to run that through the switch. Okay. So I chose to, I mean, you could, you could do it, but I don't know if, um, if this, you know, 1978 switch is up to the task of running all that current through it. Uh, so to be safe, you know, I ran a, a big relay. That's like a 30 amp relay to run the injectors and coils and all that. So I'm not going to go through wiring. I know I said I might do that, but I'm not going to go through that. It's all on the card here. It tells you where everything goes. So just wire it up like that. And um, I'm going to go through the settings real quick on what you're going to do with, you know, using the Milk Fab Engineering 36-1 trigger tooth, trigger wheel, I should say. Okay, let's go here. Let's get out of here. And we'll start from the beginning. So on ECU Masters, you're going to go to your, well, the first thing you're going to do is go to ignition and primary trigger. Okay, this is your most important thing right here. Okay, so nobody makes a base map for this, this car, this engine on ECU Masters, and nobody. And nobody on the forums had a base map for it, nothing. So I had to download a uh, base map off of ECU Masters for a Honda K24. And then I had to change a bunch of stuff, but it was just to get my basics, okay? So, um, Obviously, the Hondas use a Hall sensor, so I didn't have to change that. The adaptive threshold, I don't know what that is. It was low, so I left it. Uh, Pull-up was 820. I left that alone. That was in the original uh, K24 map. Input filter low. And then the trigger, tube, trigger type is a tooth wheel with one missing. Okay, so that's a 36-1. 36 teeth with one missing. Okay, so you're going to put that here, number of teeth including missing is 36 number of cylinders obviously six trigger edge type is rising or falling that is basically to do more with like if you have a cam sink and you don't want your cam sink and your primary trigger to line up so if you scope them out you, you want those to have a little bit of a gap because if they're too close together you can get uh trigger errors Okay, so that's what that's for. You can use rising or falling. It doesn't matter. Try it. See which one works for you. Um, number of teeth, 36 with one missing. First trigger tooth. That's where you're going to, that's the one you're going to mess with to get your engine started. Okay, so if you, it's going to be between 0 and 36. Okay, so you're, you can start out wherever you want. Like you can start out at, I started out at 6 just to, just to see where I was. And what I got was, an immediate backfire through the intake okay if it backfires through the intake that means your your timing is out it's out it's it's like on the opposite side of where it should be so i said okay let me jump all the way to the other side of the, the tooth wheel which um was ended up being around 34 okay and as soon as i did that it fired right up now once you find that out i mean it could it could end up being anywhere like I was telling you guys in the video, I don't know, maybe four or five videos ago, when you mount your trigger wheel, you can mount the trigger wheel any way you want. It doesn't matter. What will happen is, is you just have to adjust it in the ECU to find where your first ignition event is, okay? Hopefully I'm not confusing anybody, but that, that's how it works, okay? And then the trigger angle right here is where you're fine tuning it. So this is where you would be adjusting it with a timing light to get your timing to match the engine timing to match what the ECU is telling it. Okay, so you, and the way you do that is you come down to your this here and you go to ignition lock and you click that and then you can set this here to whatever you want. So you can set it to 10, 15, zero, whatever. Uh, I set it to zero because this balancer only has one mark on it, okay? Other balancers will have other marks, so you could, you could change that. So um, once you get it synced up, you gotta rig something up on your number one cylinder to clamp your lead on for it to work, okay? 
to get a good reading on your, um, your timing light. So once you get all that and you get your trigger, you, you start adjusting this until you dial in that whatever this is saying, you use this to dial it in, okay? It's gonna be between somewhere between 50 and 70. I ended up being on the high end is where it really was perfect. And then once you uncheck this, okay, once that's unchecked, it's going to go back to your ignition map. So if you're idling at, you know, right in, where's my, where'd my cursor go? It's right here. Uh, if you're idling in this area here, it's going to give you 13 and a half degrees of timing before top dead center. Okay. So, uh, yeah, this map here, like I said, is for a K24. So this is not going to be what I'm going to be using on this. I'm going to probably lower all these values, like, I don't know, 15, 20%, because I'm not going to be probably running 34, 35 up to, I mean, look at this, 37 degrees of timing. I don't think these, en I'm not hundred percent sure of this. I got to do more research, but I don't think these engines are, are capable of handling that kind of timing. I know they're a little bit more knock sensitive than, you know, like a K24 is can, they can handle a lot of RPMs and a lot of, they can, you can throw a lot at them. So this one here, it's probably going to end up being in the 30, 32 degree range. I'm guessing I'm not hundred percent sure. If any of you guys out there are L28 experts and know what kind of timing these can handle, please give me a comment and let me know. So uh, it'll give me a kind of a place to start. But anyway, um, yeah, you, and then you want to give yourself a little headroom on your, uh, so like a hundred KPA would be atmosphere. So this would be like, if you had really good air, you know, you want to give yourself some headroom out here. Uh, I lowered the RPMs because a K24 can rev to like nine grand. I lowered this to eight and most likely I'll set the rev limiter right around in this area here, 65, 6,600 is what I believe these uh, rev to. And that's it. Uh, the fueling table, the fueling table was actually pretty close, the VE table. I had to raise it up a little bit. So uh, idling in this range, let's see, can never find my cursor. Uh, it idles in this range here. so. This was a right around in this cell here, like around 45 for the K24. And I had to bump this up to get my air fuel ratio right. So anyway, uh, that's pretty much it. And there's other things in the software you wanna do also. Uh, you know, you wanna set your, your displacement, 2800 cc's, which is 2.8 liters. Uh, you want it in speed, Speed density, you want to tell it what kind of injectors you have. I have a thousand cc injectors. Use map for the Lambda target. So that's, we're running um, this off of a map sensor. The internal map sensor I run, I like to run like a hard line from the intake to the ECU because I feel like these hard lines, you know, these, these are like plastic hard lines with the push lock connectors. I really like these because to me, a hard line is gonna give you a better signal. It's gonna be more responsive because the line's not gonna move under vacuum or, or if you have boost. Okay, so that's how I run that. Um, I'm running a LSU 4.9 Lambda sensor. Uh, that all works really good. It's all set up in the um, intake. I welded that on there. As you can see, my welding is not the best, but the O2 sensor's in there. And I was getting, getting it to read like uh, 0.98 Lambda, which is in turn like right around 14 to one uh, air fuel ratio for the American uh, system. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. And it runs great. Uh, I had the fuel pressure set a little low, like around 38. So I'm probably gonna bump that to like 42 or so. So there's a lot of little things I need to just start tweaking and adjusting, okay? Uh, if, if you guys wanna learn how to wire up the injectors and wire up the coils and all that, go like two videos ago or three videos ago and uh, check those videos out because I'm not gonna go over it now, but how I have these wired in um, Wasted Spark, and this is gonna be bank fire injection, okay? And you have to set that up in the ECU too. 
I'm, I'm playing with that a little bit right now with the injectors. I'm playing with kind of like a seeing if I can do like a semi sequential injection, but I don't want to tell you guys that right now because I don't want to confuse you or give you bad information. Okay. I have it running right now and I'm, but later on, once we start tuning this thing, I might play with the way it injects fuel. Okay. That's all I'm going to say about that. I don't want to go any further because I could be wrong on a few things, but uh, I won't know until I get it on the road and we can start playing with it. So anyway, guys, that's what I wanted to show you the update and that it runs, it's alive, which is a huge thing for me to get this thing running. And it, it gives me a lot of motivation too. So, all right guys, stay tuned for more stuff on this. Um, you know, once I get the new intake gasket, we'll put that on and um, we'll fill the engine with water because right now there's no water in it. And I'm also waiting on a coolant temp sensor too. So once that comes in, I'll get that all set up and then we can really start dialing it in. So anyway, that's gonna do it for this video guys. Hope you enjoyed it, learned something and I will uh, check you all later.